How many revamps has the, has the game had since like... Seven. Seven? This is the main part I built. So like, this is the main lobby. I've actually heard you've been an architect for, what, seven years now? I have, yes. Originally started uh, as a school program on like Tinkercad. I uh, taught myself through Roblox Studio and partially Blender to end up to where I am now. First question for you is, uh, would you like to introduce yourself and what you do at Zone Roleplay? I'm Pigeon Eat Food. Uh, I'm the lead builder for uh, SCP Blackout. So I am Grayson. I'm the lead builder, developer, as you'd call it. I'm Alternative. I'm the current lead programmer and dev manager of Zone Roleplay. My name is Atlantis. I'm the chief development officer for Blackout Innovations. Oh. Anyways, uh, I do game design and uh programming for the studio as well as like managing the team obviously first question for you is what is what are some of the steps that you take in development in order to go from a concept to a finished product in in map design i usually like try to come up with an idea of what i'm gonna do but most of the time i wing it there's actually very minimal amount of time that i uh, or amount of times that i've gone off of um like a picture or something and I, I ended up just kind of following my own path and envisioning like what would look good and what would go well with uh, the site. So uh, sometimes I do go on art station and I find collections of of art. And if I figure that it, it would fit into the site, I would either make it in my own way or I would uh, try and copy it as best I could. Well, first of all, before you start, and anything you would need to design like a solution then you prototype the mechanic from a bare framework into like a proper system and then you use testers and optimize it find all the bugs and then fully implement it into the main game so it's a uh... Is it a bit of like a lengthy process or it's different for any system like an entity could take well, a lot of time because there's a lot of things that you need to account for but like other systems maybe like grenades that should be easier because you, all you really need to do is just throw a grenade and make it explode but on seven tree for example there's a lot of things that could happen wrong like right now there's a lot of bugs because i didn't know until i had to test uh so that lent the process so it's different for different mechanics how do you integrate like SCP lore into into the game. Well, um, yes, obviously the campaign, um, that's like pretty obvious. I was gonna, I'm gonna say, but um, there're gonna be clues everywhere, Easter eggs, uh, tasks to complete, including tasks which are game wide, not like server wide. No, 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 game wide, like the entire game, the entire concurrent players and players who are, for example, like let's say, steal. 5,000 SCPs. Now, that will be impossible to be done in one server since there is a limited amount of CI and there is yeah. a huge amount of uh, Foundation members. So the entire game, like everyone who plays CI, like if you're in a server and your friend is another server and you, you both steal SCPs, it's both like it's going to count. It's kind of like a Helldivers thing. You could say that's where it was inspired from, really. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, um, that's gonna also, like, be referencing to the lore. So my Other than just, that, like, references. there's just going to be, yeah, there's just gonna be clues here and there. We're gonna release stuff, documents, uh, voice recordings, uh, video recordings, and other stuff. Nice. So, yeah. How do you go for, like, optimizing the map for FPS? Oh, I usually like see, like, which parts, like, don't need shadows or, like, don't need, like, collisions or whatever i figure if they're not going if a player physically won't be able to see it without glitching into a section there should be no point in adding extra layers so having a wall behind a wall or something that you simply can't see another thing that i use is i i union a lot of my stuff so it, it's essentially one part instead of uh multiple parts that would have to be rendered uh, individually there's networking there's memory there's cpu everything like that looking through the code testing trying new things yeah. and looking at other people's code is also useful to see what you can improve with what are some building techniques that you use in order to like build certain parts of the map 
uh sometimes i use uh i usually like block out which is just like when i move towards the final part uh product i'll start using custom materials which make the site look absolutely beautiful yeah and then i add in the lights whatever yeah. you yeah, know just like finishing details do you buy the textures or do you make them um no i don't design the textures i get them off of a website yeah and yeah, if, like most games on Roblox don't really use like custom textures, but from what I can see, it's very advanced. I'm not gonna lie, it looks very next gen. I would say for for a Roblox game, you know. What impressed me like kind of the most was like the TVs and like the pixels. I don't really know how that was made, but it just yeah, that, that was Atlantis. Yeah, I don't think you even see some of the details in zone role play in like triple a games you know i mean i i don't think my site the i mean my build for uh the game like stands out much to me i have like really high standards for my build i just yeah that's why i keep like remaking the site it's just like i think i can do better and better like it's just not good enough for me i'm just like so hard on myself about the build what are some what are some challenges you face when you're developing this game uh sometimes when i have an idea or a thought that I want to build something, either I have the lack of motivation to go out and produce it, or I completely forget of what I was trying to build, and I end up just getting off and trying to find another design. So far, it's probably 173. It already went through a second rewrite, because the first one I didn't like. It was very buggy. And now the second one, it is a lot better. But yeah. it's super difficult because there's just things that just come up they don't expect and you have to account for. It's like random bugs, yeah. Yeah. How do you choose uh, what SCPs to include into the game? Uh, we look at, obviously, the popular SCPs are going to be there because if we don't include them, uh, nine-year-olds nine are just going to be screaming at me. Yeah. And that sucks. That's true. We also look at SCPs which aren't included in game and SCPs that have potential, like... You know, for example, SCP-660, that SCP is not seen in games, and if it is seen in games, it's mostly just, you know, as usual, just kills you. Really? There is really nothing to do. Yeah. But yeah, we just look at, <coughs> like, what we can do with this SCP, and we, we should, we're going to try to add as much as possible, because there's a different game loop in the game, which, like, CI... Um, needs to steal SCP, so it's an entirely different game loop. Like, it can be done without killing anyone, without being seen, you can do it silently. Uh, since we're gonna also have, like, silent weapons and uh, perks, which would do sound, for example, or uh, give you other abilities. What, like, brought you to, to Roblox and, like, wanting to build on the platform? Originally, I figured that, uh, well, partially it was I was really into scp games uh even when i was younger yeah. so at that time there wasn't that like i played uh this is not zone roleplay i played site roleplay and realized i want to do something like that so i decided to learn myself yeah. um originally my my progress started out very very uh bad as most people do when they first start out uh and over time i was gaining experience and now i'm able to uh, make prod projects like this now um do you have any inspiration for building uh i now? usually get inspired by like from the people i work with like so like mainly scpf builders like etine or like pontek those are like my main two inspirations for uh building what games do they work on uh they work on i think etine became a pilot he i think he stopped developing but he worked on like an SCPF and it, I think it's like Oswa, but I think it got shut down. But it looked really good. And then Pontek, uh, he works for Area 19. He's like the administrator. Mainly like the serious roleplay genre of uh, SCPs. Like SCPF type, like you have to Yeah, like apply. I, I'm mainly an SCPF builder. And are there any systems that you're like further advancing, such as like the gun system? Yeah, currently we are rewriting some code of the gun system to make it easier to edit for the future uh so it'll be also more optimized and 
probably more features added to it. Oh, uh, would you like to give like an example of like what that would be, like customization or like other stuff like that? Yeah, customization is planned. So, uh, weapon skins, uh, weapon attachments, camouflage, things yeah. like that. Also, new movement mechanics. So, would we be able to like customize like the magazines and like sites to be like better in like first person or something yeah pretty much everything you should be able to customize you would be able to customize everything that's necessary for the game well, thank you for answering these questions Do yeah no have... problem well, that's everything uh would you like to say anything else before we end apart from that i'd like to say that uh zone Replay has an amazing community and i'm the people that i'm working for i'm really glad that they're friendly and there's minimal ho uh, hostility in the, in the in the group so yeah i'm glad to have you on the development team and then the final question for you is uh for everybody is, is scp682 gonna be added into the game no well, the nine-year-olds are gonna it's be just so useless bad. It's, it's it's really just useless like, yeah i'm gonna be completely honest it's just it's just an sp that just kills you really as you said. I mean, most SP just do that, but it just depends on which one does it in a brutal way. 682 just bites you in half. You're not you're really not going to feel anything. You're just going to be dead. It's also going to lag your computer. Yeah. Lots of stuff to animate, yeah. So here we have um, some of the CDs one. I'm pretty sure he showed it. You can pull thing here. I didn't go like uh, well to depth. Uh, here you have the armor. It's going to be guy right here that can sell you equipment and stuff. Vision, what is this going to lead to again? Sector one. Uh, so this is going to be one of the entrances to the site. Occasionally, trucks are going to come in to here, to there. They're going to drop off items. Class D's need to organize those items and like, take them from the truck. And deliver them somewhere to make levels. So is it like XP. weapons, or like anything specific. Pretty sure I'm gonna add a mechanic where like they can steal. So we have one-way windows. Some are more tinted than others. Like you can barely see inside. But uh, that window, that main window, you can see clearly into. But from the other side, um, it's like fully tinted. Like you just can't see a thing in there. Wow. Really nothing. I wanted to make it a, as a mirror, like a one-way mirror, but uh, then it would like to be too demanding on uh, players. Oh, wait, this is CDC, Anyways, right? This is um, the sorting area. Oh. I'm pretty sure like, some box is going to be put closer to there since it's going to be like crazy journey. Like Basically, yeah. you're going to have to deliver boxes to a different area and they're going to arrive via the conveyor belt. And players, players who are doing this mission, like the mission in here, they take this and sort it like around this area. So this will um, be only for CDs, right? Yeah. This is the bathroom. I'm not going to go into that one. And then would CDs be able to like operate the trucks or would that be like for foundation? Uh, No, the, the trucks are going to be like well, basically animated, you could say. They're, they're not going to oh, okay. like, They're not gonna be like drivable. Let's see where the cell blocks are going to be. Vision, where, where is that uh, clothing area? Basically, um, one of those variables are going to be receive and well, basically input or output, receiving and delivering. We're going to take 30 clothes from here, wash them. Then you're going to, uh, after you wash them, you're going to put it, you're going to put them back here. They're going to, you're going to receive XP and money. So these are like one of, one of the ways that you can level up in game, including, uh, doing tests, escorting 05 uh eliminating foes uh etc so like how much xp would you gain for like killing somebody compared to like just like sorting clothes i don't know um killing somebody is gonna be less actually because we don't we don't want this game to turn out to turn into uh kind of like a just combat game yeah you want to be like more role play focused right yeah we just want more role play because the thing is with um most SCP roleplay games, RPG games, like SCP RPG games right now, is that they are like, just guns. You, you're like, there is no testing. Even if there is testing, you're just going to end up killing the the CDs. Like, you're not doing an actual test. You're just <coughs> taking the CDs yeah. to, to the SCP, and the result is going to be always the same. 
We're gonna die. It's essentially just a, a skirmish, pretty much. There's no role play involved. In yeah. It. So what would this door lead to? Uh, well, containment zone. That's pretty much it for the new site. Um, obviously this site is also gonna be used in the. Well, it's gonna be very off topic. It's kind of more of an announcement, actually. Our game is going to include a single-player mode. Um, we're going to release a demo of the campaign, which is actually the first mission that you're going to play with the Kickstarter campaign to raise money for the game. Since uh, this game takes a lot of resources, since we use um, a lot of uh, new technologies, to Roblox at least, all the other stuff. So we're going to need like the community's help to finish the game. And we're going to show how good we are and how well we can do with uh, more resources by releasing a 30 minute demo of the campaign and it hopefully should reflect um, how good and how professional we are in the game industry.